Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome back to Gathering the Magic. And oh my god, we're back again. Oh my god, we're back again. Similar to my last video, we're looking at the top 10 best mono blue commanders in MTG. Once again, chosen by all the lovely people over at Facebook and Reddit. Please do show your support for the channel and your love of all things magic by smashing that like button. And please do subscribe for all my future videos, including a nice little double masters box in a couple of days. Now, let's get right into the list. Just making onto the list at number 10, we have Braids, Conjurer Adept. Probably one of the more fun cards in Magic, there are several ways to go with Braids. At each player's upkeep, that player can put an artifact, creature or land onto the battlefield without paying its mana cost. You could fill your deck with those big powerful creatures like Scourge of Fleets and It That Betrays. Or maybe you want to go the Thief route. Fill your deck with cards like Beguiler of Wills, Empress Galena and that dastardly Agent of Treachery and start building that army from your enemy's creatures. Pretty soon that board state will be out of hand and victory will be yours. In as the ninth best mono blue commander we have Arcanus the Omnipotent. Another cool name and another cool blue commander. Originally from the 2002 expansion Onslaught, this mix of the Grim Reaper and Elsa from Frozen really does pack a punch. If you're using Arcanus in that mono blue deck, you could obviously go Wizard Tribal, but the filthy, filthy Simic player in me would always just focus on that card draw. Tapping Arcanus to draw three cards is just insane. Pop that off with other bluey card draws like Ominous Seas or Nadir Kraken. Soon enough, you'll be having strong Kraken boys everywhere. Or maybe you want to mill your opponents to death. Play cards like Teferi's Ageless Insight and Jace's Erasure and they'll be dead quicker than you can say. You're dead. You are dead. Bop, boop, beep. Bop, bop, boop, bop. You're dead. For the 8th best mono blue commander, we have Sun Quan, Lord of Wu. And I really don't know if this is Redditor's trolling or if it's actually a really popular commander. Sun gives all of your other creatures horsemanship, which if you don't know what horsemanship is, if a creature has horsemanship, they can only be blocked with other creatures with horsemanship. Say what again? I dare you. I'll say what one more goddamn time. Think of it as flying, but way more particular. So obviously, if you've got this as commander, get all those other creatures with horsemanship like Wu Light Cavalry and Lu Meng Wu General and nay your way to victory. Was that the worst rhyme attempt I've ever done? In as the seventh best mono blue commander, we have Atemsis, all seeing. And once again, I think Atemsis is a really cool commander. Is blue a really cool color in general for commander? Am I biased? Yeah. Yeah, probably, definitely. The game plan for Atemsis speaks for itself. You want to get that big hand. Even better if you have no maximum hand size, thanks to a Reliquary Tower or Spellbook. Deal damage with Atemsis and have that variety of six different CMC costs to get the win. Stretch your deck with cheap mana cards like Opt, all the way to the biggest of boys with cards like Enter the Infinite, whacking cards like the Magic Mirror and Blue Sun Zenith to be drawing even more cards. And finally, why not add in those cards like Boon of the Wishgiver and Sensor to have that cycling ability to draw you even more cards if you really need it. Just missing out on the top half at number six, we have Talrand, Sky Summoner. Talrand does exactly what it says on the tin. Play an instant or sorcery and get a 2-2 Flying Drake. For old Tally, you want to go full-on Spell Slinger here. Have minimal creatures in that deck and constantly be pinging at your opponents with cheap instants or sorceries such as Favourable Winds or Telling Time. Draw more cards, play more quick spells, create more 2-2s and overwhelm your opponent in no time. And because I feel like it, I'll bring back the Card of the Deck Award or whatever I called it last episode, but this time for Towerend. And this card would obviously be Turnabout. Play Turnabout, that's one 2-2 already and then you get to untap all of your lands for example and then go ahead and hit your opponents with even more instants and sorceries that my friends gives you two two drakes for days you love to see it now before i get onto the top five i'll quickly say if you're still watching then besides obviously being an absolute legend if you've not already subscribed then why not subscribe just one little click and it'll help me out so much Plus, it's my birthday in a few days, and you can say that's your present to me. Coming in as the fifth best mono blue commander we have is Memnarch, if I've said that right. A very popular choice in the votes, and I can see why. That sneaky, sneaky ability that really makes Memnarch a very steely boy. Let's say your opponent has a Torbran, for example. Use Memnarch's first ability on your enemy's Torbran, and now he's an artifact dwarf noble. Then use Memmi's second ability, and guess what? You've now got control of Torbran and for good too, as it's not an effect that ends at the end of your turn. 
Stack your deck with artifacts like Vidalcan Orrery and Rings of Bright Hearth and top it off by getting out that Padim console of innovation and suddenly you've got a very hexproof board state and a very good chance of victory. Just missing out on the podium places at number four, we have Psy, Master Thopterist. Again, another commander that does exactly what it says on the tin. If you have Psy, you're getting out those Thopters, creating a 1-1 army, and then battering your way over the finish line. Get out those pro Thopter cards like Chief Engineer, an efficient construction, and build up even more artifacts, and just use those artifacts to create even more artifacts. The circle of life. Then smash your way through with beefy artifact creatures like Master of Erethium and Steel Overseer and you'll have more fun than Hulk whenever he sees Loki. That example definitely made sense in my head. Taking the bronze medal as the third best mono blue commander we have Tetsuko Umazawa, Fugitive. Tetsuko is wicked, creatures with power or toughness 1 can't be blocked. That gives such a ridiculously wide variety of creatures that's going to make playing against Tetsuko extremely difficult. Fill your deck with creatures like Neurok Commando and Scroll Thief, so not only you're dealing unblockable damage, but you're also getting to draw cards as well. Maybe get out a card like Cephalid Constable, deal damage, then return a permanent to that player's hand. Or maybe you want to go Infect and kill all your opponents that way, add in a Phyrexian Digester and a Plague Myrrh, and in no time at all, your opponents will be all poisoned to extinction. Runner up as the second best mono blue commander, we have Arkham Dagson. And wouldn't you know it, another super fun commander. So many shenanigans to be had with Arkham. Let's go for the obvious and assume your decks have those annoying beasts like Blightsteel Colossus. Well now, you tap Arkham and that big old beast bites the dust. You can go the popular persistent petitioners route as many players love to do and fill out those decks with pesky human advisors. But once again, I think you really want to focus on those artifacts, getting things like chromatic orrery and basalt monolith and get that mana engine going and find ways to constantly tap and untap Arkham. Sacrifice your little creatures like Junk Diver, use Arkham to search out even more powerful non-creature artifacts like Darksteel Force and Acroma's Memorial and watch your enemies shed tears in no time at all. Coming in as the best mono blue commander is Urza Lord High Artificer. And like the mono white video with Shram, Urza was the clear favourite of the Facebook and Reddit users by a long way. I'd even go so far to say as Urza has as many votes as everyone else combined. You can see why. Urza has so many abilities that all intertwine and work so well off each other. He essentially turns all of those artifacts on your side of the board into mana rocks. You want to quickly get out those cheap to play artifact creatures like Foundry Inspector and Ethereum Sculptor. Not only can you get mana from them, but all other artifacts to come out will be even cheaper to run. Then once you've got a stack board with those mana rock artifact creatures, use Urza's final ability to hopefully cheat out big artifact creatures like Worm Coil Engine and Soul of New Phyrexia and storm your way to victory. There we have it, that is the list. Let me know what colour you want to see next in the comments and I'll do whatever the most liked comment is. Keep your eye out for that Double Masters booster box in the coming days and don't forget to smash that like button and why not subscribe for even more Magic the Gathering content. I will pop out the links to our socials now so check out that Insta for those daily hilarious MTG memes. For now, I'm all tapped out so I'll see you in the next video.